Okay, so our next topic is going to be epigastric pain. And basically, we're going to be talking about the most common causes of epigastric pain, gastritis and peptic ulcer disease, um, as well as rare causes such as Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Now, if a patient comes in with epigastric pain and they're less than 45 years old, you want to start them off on a trial with H2 blockers or proton pump inhibitors. PPIs are a little better. If a patient is over 45 years old and they have anemia with heme positive stools over six month duration with weight loss, you want to do an endoscopy first. And in the patient under 45 with epigastric pain, if you did PPI and H2, block, H2 blockers and the symptoms persist, here you also want to do an endoscopy. Now, gastritis and peptic ulcer disease, they're oftentimes caused by H. pylori. Now, what is your treatment of H. pylori? It's going to be a proton pump inhibitor, clarithromycin, and amoxicillin, or tetracycline and metronidazole. Now, you have to remember, you're only going to treat H. pylori if it's associated with gastritis or ulcer disease. So if a patient doesn't have symptoms and they have an incidental H. pylori finding, you're not going to treat these patients with a triple therapy. Now, how are we going to make our diagnosis of H. pylori? There's non-invasive tests, and you have to remember, these do not rule out gastric carcinoma. So if you do an endoscopy with a biopsy, remember, if this is done, there's no further testing necessary um, for H. pylori. But the non-invasive tests are serology, which increase the degree of sensitivity, but it lacks specificity because it can't determine new versus old infection. And when you're going to test for eradication, you're going to do a urea breath testing and stool antigen detection. A urea breath test is good for detecting active infection, but you have to remember, patients must be off PPIs for two weeks and off antibiotics and bismuth for four weeks. Fecal antigen tests for H. pylori, patients have to be off antibiotics, PPIs, and bismuth as well. Our most accurate test for H. pylori is biopsy and histology. Remember, when we do urea breath, breath testing and stool antigen testing, we're going to do this four weeks after the completion of the therapy. What are the indications in peptic ulcer disease for surgery? Peptic ulcer disease, first of all, you want to remember duodenal ulcers are usually relieved by food and they come as uh, postprandial pain. And stomach ulcers, the pain worsens with food. There's pain with eating. Indications for surgery and peptic ulcer disease include upper GI bleeding not amenable to endoscopic procedures, perforation, refractory ulcers, as well as gastric outlet obstruction. Now, if they asked you, what test can be used to confirm the eradication of H. pylori? What are you going to answer? You're going to answer urea breath test. If they ask you, what are you going to use for H. pylori with symptoms in a pregnant patient? What are you going to do? If, I'm sorry, if you have a patient that is penicillin allergic, what are you going to do? You're going to use metronidazole. What you want to do, actually, there's another thing, and it's called quadruple therapy. And basically, if there's persistent infection, despite triple therapy, you're going to do something called quadruple therapy, where you're going to do a PPI plus clarithromycin and amoxicillin, and you're going to actually add bismuth. So if there's persistence with this triple therapy, you're going to do quadruple therapy. Now... Our next topic is going to be Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Now, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome is a gastrin-producing cancer, and 20% of them are associated with MEN1. Now, if you have a patient with Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, what's going to be a clue that this patient has MEN1? It's going to be hypercalcemia with the Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Now, when are you going to think about Zollinger-Ellison syndrome? You're going to think about it when there's ulcers recurrent after therapy, multiple in number, and in the distal 
cushion of the duodenum. Diarrhea occurs in two-thirds of the patients, and steatoria occurs as well due to the inactivation of lipase due to an increase in acid in the duodenum. What are the diagnostic tests you're going to do in Zollinger-Ellison syndrome? Gastrin levels are going to be increased while the patient is off anti-secretory secretory therapy for several days. Because you have to remember, everyone on an H2 blocker or proton pump inhibitor has an elevated gastrin level, right? Because it's actually um, inhibiting your hydrochloric acid, which is going to cause a feedback increase in your gastrin. So that's why the gastrin levels are, have to be increased while the patient is off anti-secretory therapy for several days. An increase, increased gastric output with an increased gastrin level or a secretin test positive, which is going to be abnormal. Because normally when you inject IV secretin in a patient who has an increase in gastrin, gastrin is going to be inhibited because that's what secretin does. It inhibits gastrin. But when you do the IV secretin test and you give the patient secretin and they have a paradoxical increase in gastrin levels, you, have, you confirm your Zollinger-Ellison. Now for metastasis, you're going to do somatostatin receptor scintigraphy. And for metastatic disease, you're going to do long-term PPIs. The single most sensitive test for ZE syndrome is endoscopic ultrasound and localized lesions are surgically removed. And this is going to end our topic on epigastric pain. Um, quick review. Epigastric pain in a patient under 45, you're going to do a trial of H2 blockers or PPIs, and if the symptoms persist, you're going to do endoscopy. If they're over 45 with anemia, heme-positive stools, over six-month duration with weight loss, you're going to do endoscopy also. Um, to make the di diagnosis of H. pylori, you have an invasive and non-invasive. Your most accurate invasive is biopsy and histology, and your non-invasive is going to be serology and urea breath testing and stool antigen detection to test for eradication. Your treatment in symptomatic H. pylori is, is going to be triple therapy with PPIs, clarithromycin, and amoxicillin. And if it's recurrent after that, you're going to add Bisma for quadruple therapy. And remember, non, uh, asymptomatic uh, H. pylori does not get treatment. ZE syndrome, um, you're going to diagnose them with increased gastrin level while the patient is off anti-secretory therapy for a few days increased gastric output and an increased gastrin level, as long as as well as an abnormal IV secretin test. For metastasis, you're going to do somatostatin receptor scintigraphy and give long-term PPIs. And a single most sensitive test is going to be endos endoscopic ultrasound. And all localized lesions are going to be surgically removed.